So this week we are talking about the spiral meridian, which if you were here Tuesday, this is review, but um, when you look at the connective tissue and the mus muscle tissue in the body, um, if you follow the way the fibers and the direction of the fibers go, we can actually start to create these pathways throughout the body. So like fibers that run into each other and kind of um, follow the same direction, we look at as these meridians. Um, so today we're talking about the spiral meridian, which would connect um, the back of the neck, kind of wrapping around the rib cage, and then actually crossing in front of your core to the front of the opposite hip, and then going um, down that leg. So we are going to be working on some twisting and spiraling action, but by the end, I want you to, when we'll hit some twists and hopefully you'll feel like things are more accessible or stronger, kind of more fired up in that way. Um, I, I think it's an interesting way to think about the body. So um, we'll do a little bit of that and we'll start with a little neck stretch just as we did on Tuesday. So as always lengthen the back of the neck there. On Tuesday, I was talking about almost broadening this area where the skull meets the neck, like imagining you could spread that out and you'll feel that that sense of like spreading it out kind of lengthens the neck. And from there, tip the right ear towards the right shoulder, trying to preserve the length, even though we're shifting through space. If you want a little extra, you can take the fingertips to the left shoulder here. Um, in, I used to do ballet and this is like a bolero move where we always called it bolero arms. So bolero arm. And then you can exhale and rotate the gaze towards the shoulder. You might feel that stretch start to move down like more towards the trap. And that is some neck muscular connection going on in there. And then bring the gaze forward once again. If you've got that hand on the shoulder, you can let, the, let that go and then just peel the head back to vertical and just take a moment, feel like there is that extra space in the left side and then we're gonna bring that into the right. So once again, broaden that base of the skull, sometimes putting your fingers there helps and then tip the left ear towards the left shoulder. If you want to add some intensity, to the sensation, you can bring right fingers onto the right shoulder, like a cap. And then exhale, turn that gaze towards the shoulder. And keep here actively trying to draw that chin towards the throat, and that's gonna help lengthen the neck. Breathing here. And then gaze comes forward once again. We'll just un, um, unfurl the fingers from the shoulder and then take the head back to vertical. Ooh, getting a little space in there. And let's head to our backs for a low bridge here. So planting those feet on the floor, we're flying back. Finding those knees pointing up to the ceiling. And we're not gonna do anything crazy fancy here today. But we'll just try to dial into some sensation. So lengthen that tailbone and use the glutes to lift the pelvis up. And just as we did on Tuesday, envision. So we're going to use our, our brain's imagery power, almost like we were taking a corkscrew and corkscrewing our feet into the mat. So it's like you're trying to externally rotate the feet, but they're not going to move. And when you do that kind of activation on the floor, you'll feel the glutes turn on even more. Exhale here. And then reach the arms up towards the ceiling, palms facing each other. We'll reach those arms up more, moving the shoulder blades off the mat. And then swipe the arms overhead, reaching towards the floor. You don't have to actually touch the floor, but You'll notice when you're starting to feel that good stretch in the armpit and shoulder region. And then reach the arms up again and lower those shoulder blades to the floor. And we'll do that two more times. So exhale, hold down to the rib cage, reach the shoulder blades away from the spine, and then swipe the arms overhead to some degree. You might be up on a diagonal, 
that might feel like enough for your shoulders, that is totally fine. Back towards the ceiling and then lower the shoulder blades there. Exhale, peel the shoulder blades off, reaching up here and then swipe them over. This is the last time we'll do this. And if it feels okay in this extended position, you can flex the wrist and we'll pull back here. So pull back on the right fingers with the left hand. And you might feel that adding this wrist stretch actually kind of intensifies the stretch down the whole chain of that right arm. Exhale. And we'll switch hands. So press that left palm flat and pull back on the fingers with the right hand. Check in with the base of your, your skull there, trying to broaden that space towards the mat. Exhale. And then swipe the arms all the way down to the floor and we'll lower through the spine here. Coming towards our core activation, I'm gonna show with the legs extended up over the hips today, but if you prefer to keep the feet down, you do that, this is your class. Interlace the hands behind the head and the elbows point up. Inhale here. Exhale, consolidate the rib cage, helping you peel head and shoulder blades off the mat. Really feel the sacrum weighted into the floor here. Inhale, lower. One more, just like that. Exhale, head and shoulder and blades lift, keeping some weight of the skull back into the hands. And when you do that, just releasing weight into the hands, you'll feel it ramp up the core. Inhale, lower. Starting our add-ons, take them if you'd like here. Exhale, head and shoulder blades lift. Option one, add a twist to the left. And you'll reach the right arm across the left thigh, so on the outside of the left thigh, and slightly push that thigh into the arm and resist with it. Right hand returns, inhale, lower. Exhale, head and shoulder blades lift. Peeling up, adding a twist to the right here. We'll swipe the left arm across the right thigh and then get that resistance between right thigh and left arm. Staying off that right shoulder blade. Hand returns, inhale, lower. Just one more today. Exhale, head and shoulder blades lift. Twisting to the left, if you'd like, swipe that right arm on the outside of the left leg. And then if you'd like, we'll extend the left arm out to the side. So like half of a T here, you'll feel it ramp up the oblique. Both hands return, inhale, lower. Exhale, head and shoulder blades lift. Maybe twisting right if you'd like. Left arm reaches across the right thigh. And then if you'd like that, right arm opens up to the side. Back to center, inhale, lower. Oh, and just take the feet wide on the mat. Let the knees fall in. And then let both knees fall to the left. Coming to our supine twist here. So you can extend the right arm alongside the ear overhead. And I want you to feel this sensation, almost like somebody was pushing the pelvis and the whole kind of shoulder complex away from each other. Getting this first really nice spiral stretch here. You could also take the elbow towards a cactus or goalpost arm. Knees come back through center and we'll switch sides. So both legs come right. We press through that left foot, pulling the left half of the pelvis off the mat. And then that same sensation, almost like somebody had, um, oh, I wish I knew the name of this device, but there are these, they're like a reverse clamp. You can put in a small space and then extend the space out. Imagine that in between your pelvic point and the bottom of your rib cage. So really extending there. Option to take the goalpost arm if that feels better on the shoulder. And then take it back to the center. We'll come up and around for a quadruped. Oh, that feels good. You always think the strength stuff won't stretch you out. And then you feel like there's more space once you do it. All right, so coming on your hands and knees here, find those wrists under the shoulders. 
and we're going to hold on to all of the work we just did to wake up our core. So we're going to start with shoulder blade warm ups. They're called serratus puffs. We did this on Tuesday. We'll exhale, push the floor away, peel the shoulder blades apart from the spine. So move them away from each other. But we're isolating this kind of doming and rounding of the upper back just to the upper back. So pushing them apart, let the head release. And then fall back to neutral, shoulder blades come on the back and let them continue pulling towards each other as the chest falls between the, the arms. But hold on to the front of the ribs, don't let it sag down. Push into the floor, exhale, peel the shoulder blades apart, let that head go. Hold on to your low belly here. Through neutral and let the chest fall as those shoulder blades retract, pulling towards each other. So exhale, push the floor away. This is scapular protraction here when they pull towards the side of the ribs. And then through the middle, we'll come to retraction, pulling those shoulder blades together on the back. And then let that go, we'll move to a dolphin. Many options here, you can lower the forearms. If you don't like dolphin, you can always come back to this position with the knees down or head to a down dog with the hands planted. If you wanna to head to dolphin, you'll tuck the toes, lift that pelvis up, keeping those knees nice and buoyant. And here, I want you to feel the strength of the shoulder blades on the rib cage, almost like you were leaning your body weight into the shoulder blades. If you'd like, you can lift the left leg behind you, bend the knee, and then add some pulses through the glute. So keep pelvis where it is and just press that foot up an inch, really motoring by turning the glute on and it's gonna extend the hip to lift that leg a bit. Two more. A little stretch on the back of the right leg as well. Lower that foot and we'll switch sides. So right leg extends back, hold on to the pelvis, bend the right knee, and then glute is your motor here. We're just taking little hip extensions to wake the glute up even more. Keep pulling into those shoulder blades, leaning into them. They can hold you. You just gotta work at the connection there. Two more. And then lower the foot. You can take a child's pose for a second. Knees can come wide or all the way together. Maybe reach the arms out. Big inhale here. Exhale, release. One more breath, inhale. And exhale, release. We'll shift the weight forward, coming to stand at the top of the mat. Tadasana. If you're using that playlist, go ahead and click it started. Pressing into those feet for sun cell one. Inhale, reach the arms forward and up. Exhale, long spine, hinge at the hips, hands plant. Right foot steps back, lower the knee, untuck the toes, and inhale, arms lift. Really reach them an extra inch or two to pull those shoulders up towards your ears. And feel how if you keep this right glute anchor, you get an extra stretch in the front of the hip. Plant the hands, you can head to down dog or plank. From plank, feel those shoulder blades kind of pop onto the back, lower those knees and exhale lower to the floor. Inhale, cobra, pulling back with the hands and exhale, we all meet in down dog. Right foot steps forward, lower left knee, untuck the toes. Inhale, lift for your half kneel. Anchor that left glute and then reach the arms even higher, letting those shoulder, shoulders pull up towards the ears. Maybe your mom told you not to do this, but I'm giving you permission. <laughs> Exhale, hands plant forward and step the back foot in. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, hinge at the hips, hands plant. Left foot steps back for our half kneel, lower the knee, untuck the toes, inhale, arms lift. And this time we'll take it one at a time. So right arm reaches up and then the left arm reaches. And if you feel as you do this, like you're starting to let the ribs wing forward, 
you can take the arms forward on a diagonal and that might give you some more control in the front. Let that reaching go. We'll plant the hands head to down to over plank. From plank, you'll exhale, lower the knees, keep that chest open as you lower to the floor. Inhale, cobra, pull the chest forward. Exhale, down dog, we're all moving there. Left foot steps forward, lower right knee, untuck the toes, familiar position. Inhale, arms lift up. And one at a time, extra couple inches of reach here. We're really getting the shoulder blades moving on the back on the ribs, and that's gonna start opening up that connective tissue back there. One more each side, and then exhale, hands plant forward, right foot steps in, and inhale, arms reach up to stand. Exhale, hinge of the hip, sequence one here, starting the same way. Right foot steps back, lower the knee. Option to keep the toes tucked, you don't have to and inhale, arms lift. Exhale, take the left hand behind the pelvis and connect the left knuckles to the right glute. You're gonna hold these together. Don't let this right pelvis move on you. And then draw the right um, elbow next to the waist. Make a fist with that hand. Exhale, reach the hand forward for a punch as you twist to the left. And draw it back in, inhale, coming back to center. So exhale, we protract the shoulder blade and punch with a twist. And then inhale, come back to center. So just keep moving between these two positions. And anchoring that right half of the pelvis is gonna help us isolate the twist to our um, thoracic region of the spine, the rib cage area. Just one more punch, we'll pause there. And then plant the right hand for a twisted crescent. Many options here, you can fly the left arm up. We're gonna keep a neutral pelvis, but you can try extending the right leg here. So to keep neutral pelvis, I want you to think about left hip crease continuing to deepen, like that femur was really pushing into the hip socket, and then keep the right glute awake. Inhale here, and exhale. Gaze towards the floor, we'll bring the right knee in, lower that shin for a modified side plank. Left leg reaches back, weight into that right hand and shin. Establish neutral pelvis here, tailbone reaching towards the heel, and then you can try lifting the left leg if you'd like. Coordination challenge this week, you can reach the left arm over the ear, so reaching arm and leg away from each other, and then exhale, bend, um, arm and leg tapping knee to elbow and extend once again. Now to make this happen, I don't want you to be curving the spine or crunching there. We wanna keep a nice neutral spine and isolate the action to the hip joint, um, which means you're not moving the pelvis. Sorry, curving my spine really threw me off you guys. So reaching, I'm pulling it in if that feels okay. Pulling it in. From here, we'll head to gate pose. So pull that left knee forward and then extend the leg in front of you, lower it to the floor, walk the right hand out to the right and the left arm reaches over for your gait. Keep rooting that tailbone down towards the floor to keep length in the low back. You can let the neck go here. And then start to step the left foot forward, back towards the half kneel position. Rise to vertical. Left hand comes behind the right glute once again. Tap those right toes. Imagine you are pulling the feet towards each other. Use that core to lift towards a twisted crescent. Right elbow comes towards the waist. Inhale, exhale, twist to the left, back to neutral. So familiar action here. Now we're dealing with being more upright, a little bit trickier. Really hold on to that right glute. Moving side to side. And one more, we'll punch it out. Extend the left arm back behind you if that feels okay. And then next option is to make this an exalted crescent. So 
Exhale, we'll reach left hand towards the back of the right thigh, maybe reach the right arm up. Feeling some extra opening in the right hip. And then exhale, windmill open to a left warrior two. So facing the other side of the mat, ground the right heel, open it up, inhale, and exhale, reverse, left arm over the ear. Inhale through center, pick the ribs up out of the pelvis, and exhale, left forearm to the left thigh. Ooh, if you got a hip crack, I did too. Inhale, open it up. Exhale, reverse. Keep lifting the rib cage like they could pull out of the pelvis there. Inhale, and exhale, warrior variation. We'll keep turning to the front of the mat, plant those hands, lift the left leg for three-legged down dog. From here, we'll shift forward and back to this position. Many options to make this happen. You can lower the left leg, shift forward to plank, option one, and then crease in the hips, lift that pelvis up, and then extend the left leg. So that's option one. Option two, lower that foot, shift it forward, and then pull the knees in for a quadruped. From here, tuck the toes, lift that pelvis. You can lift the left leg again. Option three, Lift that left leg, you can keep it lifted as you shift forward towards a one-legged plank. Push into the floor, exhale, extend back, three-legged down bow. So pick your option here and really be conscious about finding those shoulder blades on the back, keeping a nice long neck as you go. This is really not a spirally movement, but we'll kind of add a layer later. So we're just prepping for it. One more time, shift it forward. We'll all head to plank, both feet down, and then lower the knees, lower to the floor. Walk those fingers off the mat, elbows point up for a wide fingertip cobra. Inhale, pull the shoulder blades together as you lift that chest, and really turn the glutes on, anchor your pubic bone to protect that low back. Exhale, hands plant, we'll tuck the toes, lift to your down dog. Big inhale here, let some noise out, woo, exhale. One more like that, if you're alone, I want you to really go for it, inhale, exhale. And we'll head straight to the other side. So right foot steps forward for our half kneel, lower left knee, you can keep the toes tucked if you like and inhale. Exhale, right hand behind, knuckles fusing to the left half of the pelvis, and then draw that left elbow in by your side, making a fist here. Inhale, exhale, punch and add your twist here, really reaching from the left shoulder blade and draw it back in, inhale. Exhale, punch, draw it back in and punch. Just moving between these two and really holding on to that anchor on the back of the left pelvis. Two more. Last time we punch and pause, plant that left hand under the shoulder for twisted crescent. You can keep the knee down or extend the left leg. Keep deepening the right hip crease and keep the left glute on. You can use your hands to help you with either of those. Breathing here. Feeling some opening in the outer right hip. And then head to modified side plank, face comes to the floor, left knee and shin lower, and we'll reach the right leg back. Establish your base here before you try lifting that leg. And then maybe reach the right arm over the ear. Next option to take here, we'll start to Flex at the hip and bend the elbow, tapping knee to elbow. So it's really like you are leaning against a wall with your spine and just the leg and the arm are gonna move. Flexing in the hip, reaching it back. Flexing in the hip. Flexing in the hip. Reach it back this next time, we'll head to our gate. So pull that right knee up and then extend the leg in front of you, lowering the foot. Left hand walks to the left side, 
when you can reach for your gate, taking right arm over the ear, or I don't really have space here. So I'm gonna lift the right elbow up towards the ceiling, palm facing away from me. Exhale here, let it go. And then step the right foot back to the mat for a half kneel legs. We'll rise to vertical, right hand behind the pelvis, tuck the back toes and pull those feet together to give you that lift to your crescent. Exhale, punch the left arm forward for your twist and back. And we twist and back. Now it's gonna be a bit harder to keep this pelvis neutral. So if you're experiencing that, just notice it, it's fine. It's normal if it's harder, if you're not broken, reach and back. Last time, left arm reaches forward, right arm reaches back if you'd like, and then make it exalted. You can exhale, extend the left arm up, maybe right fingers to the back of the left thigh. You can bring the gaze to the floor if that feels okay. Inhale here, exhale, we'll open to warrior two. So windmill the arms, opening to the opposite side of the mat, right knee is bent there. Inhale, exhale, reverse. Right arm over the ear here, really spreading this right side open. Inhale through center and exhale, keeping your lift, right forearm to right thigh. Inhale, rise, exhale, reverse. Inhale through center last time. Exhale, warrior variation. Really pressing through the feet here, keeping both glutes on. We'll turn to the mat, plant those hands, and swipe the right leg back, three-legged down dog. So shifting forward, you have your three options. You can do a two-legged plank, lifting back towards a three-legged down dog. You could shift forward to quadruped. Third option, you can keep the right leg lifted for a one-legged plank. Really honor what you need. It can switch halfway between. It doesn't have to be rigid. Shifting forward and back, building some rhythmic strength here. And the next time you shift forward, lower the right foot if you have it up, we'll lower the knees and lower to the floor. Wide fingertip cobra, they come off the mat. Inhale, lift that chest up, pull the shoulder blades together. Really bring that space into the low back. And then exhale, release. We'll plant the hands, lift into your down dog. Walk the feet in a little bit, big inhale. Exhale, let it go. And inhale, rise on the toes here. Exhale, bend the knees, we'll walk or hop forward. Heading to some sun cell A's, building some heat. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Head to down dogs or plank. From plank, you can exhale, lower the knees and lower to the floor. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. Everybody walk those feet in a touch. Inhale, rise on the toes. Exhale, bend the knees and walk or hop forward. Inhale, rise to stand. Exhale, hinge up the hips, plant those hands. Head to down dog or plank. From plank, you can lower the knees or lower halfway. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog. Walk those feet in a touch. Inhale, lift on the toes. Exhale, bend the knees and walk or hop forward. We'll do just one more. Take it in your time. Inhale, lift. So I won't cue you. You can head to down dog or do your plank. Adding a vinyasa. Going as slowly or quickly as you'd like. And then we'll meet in that down dog there. Big inhale. Exhale, let some sound out once again. <sighs> Letting it go. And we'll start our second sequence. So wading into that right foot, we'll step the left foot as far forward as we can, keep the hands planted. And right leg lifts up for a standing L. 
Now, if you feel really crunched in that right hip or like you're curving the back, do something to lift the hands up. So lift the floor up to a point where it feels good in the hip and the spine feels nice and long. You can modify your space to work for you, not the other way around. Bit of a tricky act here. We're gonna walk our hands up the legs as we rise to stand. Right knee lifts here towards stork. Hands to prayer, option to exhale, twist to the right. Just move through the rib cage here. Back towards the center, shoot the right leg back and those hands will walk back down the leg, coming to your standing L. Remember, those hands can be on blocks or books. Press into the left foot, hands walk up the leg. Right knee lifts, hands to prayer. Optional twist here, twisting to the right. Hold on to that left glute. It's going to want to go on you. Back to center, return to your standing L. Take your time here. Right leg reaching back. You feel it in that leg. I feel it too, don't worry. Last time, we'll walk the hands up the leg. Right knee lifts. Maybe add your twist to the right. And we'll head to seated twist. You'll get relief on this left leg. Right leg crosses behind the left, right fingers to the floor. Lower through a seated twist and immediately unwind to the back of the mat. Plant those hands for a table. We'll press into the feet and lift the pelvis and lower. So your fingers here are facing the same direction as the feet. You could also try winging them out a little bit. That helps with opening the chest, um, puts your shoulder in a little bit more of an open position there so that you're not caving forward. Lifting and lowering. Just one more here, we'll lift, lower towards the mat and then turn to the left, coming towards dolphin. If you don't wanna do that, you can head straight to a down dog. And if you'd like, you can lift the left leg, bend the left knee, and once again, we'll pulse that left glute, pressing the foot up, leaning the weight into the shoulder blades. Two more. Now we'll lift up to a left warrior two. So if you're in dolphin, press into the hands, extend the elbows, we'll all step the left foot forward, walk the right foot slightly to the right, and then maybe ground the heel. Rise for your warrior one. I want you to adjust the legs so that your pelvis can be neutral with the front of the mat. So parallel to the front of the mat, that might mean you walk your right leg wider or pick up the right heel. Just workshop it for yourself for a moment. Not focus on the leg shape, focus on the pelvis here. Inhale, reach the arms up, lift the rib cage up, and then exhale, interlace those hands behind the pelvis at the sacrum, you can bend the elbows. Crease in the left hip, humble warrior will shift forward, keeping neutral pelvis, of course, and a nice long spine. Let go of the grip of your hands. We'll take them forward and wide on the diagonals, maybe propping up on the fingertips and exhale, pull the front of the ribs into the back, almost like a small curve. You'll feel some extra stretch there. And then plant the right hand under your shoulder. We'll come to a dancer's table. So come to the outer side of the right foot and then step the left foot behind the right leg, reach the left arm forward. Your pelvis is opening just slightly. It's not like a full wild thing. We're a little more controlled here. Big move, we'll step the left foot back to the mat, stepping it forward. Rise to lift that right knee to your chest here. Externally rotate at the right hip. Figure four, we'll cross right ankle over the left thigh and crease at the hips like we were sitting in a chair. Option here is to extend the arms um, alongside the ears on the diagonals, but don't let that Peel your front body open. Don't let the front spill. You still want to pull the chin towards the pubic bone. We'll uncross the leg, rise to stand, inhale, 
head to your down dog get there in any way you like so you can add that vinyasa or just head to the down dog your choice no pressure and once we get there big inhale let something out here feel what that natural rise and fall is like and we'll head to the other side so heading to our standing out right foot steps forward don't lift those hands and we'll lift the left leg reaching it back in space finding that neutral pelvis and remember if this is crunching in the hip or hurting your back or your right knee lift those hands up use blocks or books you can even use a chair here to make it work for you draw that low belly up towards the back and we'll walk the hands up the leg lifting left knee to chest for stork hands at prayer maybe exhale twist to the left return to standing out back to center left leg reaches back hands lower slowly so these are really like single leg squats we'll walk the hands up the leg always remember you can keep the supporting knee buoyant here or you should and then twist to the left if you'd like back to center return to your standing out a little bit of a bend in that right knee as you go never have it locked there and then last time i know that right leg feels it walk those hands up the leg left knee lifts it's okay to pause and take a break add a twist to the left untwist we're moving through our seated twist cross left knee behind the right leg left fingers to the floor We'll pass across the side of the mat and unwind to the back for our table lifts. Planting those hands in the orientation that feels good for your shoulders. And then using that glute, the glutes rather, to open up the front of the hip. So we've got open chest, open hips, open front really. Two more. Next time you lift, slowly lower, turn to your right, head to three legged dolphin or down dog. So that right leg will lift, bend that knee, hold on to the pelvis, and we'll just press the leg up using that glute, weighting into the shoulder blades if you're in your dolphin. Couple more. Pause your pulse. We'll head to our warrior one. From dolphin, you'll press into the hands. If you're in down dog, you can just swing the leg through and then walk the left leg out to the left a bit before you rise for warrior one. Once again, a few seconds here, workshop what you need to do with the legs in terms of width, lifting the heel to feel like this pelvis is just nicely um, placed between the legs here. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, swing them down, interlace those fingers behind the pelvis, pulling the rib cage out of the pelvis. We'll crease in the right hip to shift forward, humble warrior. You don't have to go super far. Holding here. And then you can release the hands if it feels good. Maybe walk those fingertips on the diagonal forward and exhale, curl that spine a bit, almost like you were pulling the front of you into the back of you. This isn't working for you if you don't like having the fingers down. You can stay in your humble warrior with the hands interlaced. Heading to dancer's table here, we'll all plant the left hand under left shoulder. Outer edge of the left foot will step the right toes behind the left leg for this modified wild thing position. Still reaching tailbone towards the heels. Inhale, exhale, release. And then step the right foot forward on the mat. Rise to stand, lifting that left knee up for figure four. External rotation in the hip, crossing left ankle over right thigh. And then sitting the hips back. Now cranking on this left knee in any way, really honoring where you're at now. You don't need to be in a perfect 180. That's not going to help the knee joint by any means. 
And then next option is to fly those arms alongside the ear. We'll press into the right foot, plant the left and extend, inhale. Let's exhale, hinge at the hips, let the, the torso spill over the thighs here. Maybe grab opposite elbow with opposite hand, just adding a little sway side to side. Really releasing the head, letting those ears fall between the biceps before we head to our stream. Big exhale there. And then plant those hands, we'll rise to stand. Most of the stream is familiar, there are just a couple of new things, but I'll walk you through it as we get there. Here we're here on Tuesday, it is familiar. So press into those feet, maybe close the eyes for a second, just to kind of do a body scan quickly, inhaling, really filling up with air and exhaling, letting go of what was in there. Flutter those eyes open and we'll go for it. Inhale, arms lift up, exhale, hinge at the hips, hands plant, Right foot steps back for half kneel. Lower the, the knees, untuck those toes. Inhale, arms lift. And we'll swing the left arm forward, down and around to take you into a fuller kind of T twist. And then we'll switch sides. So you can pick a side to inhale and a side to exhale as you move between these swings. And then mentally envision that your hand was still on that right glute. So it's not gonna move on you. Maybe you're getting a couple of cracks in. And next time, right arms forward, we'll pause here. Two options, you can head to Twisted Crescent, extending the right knee as you plant the right hand, or head to right side plank, stacking the left foot on top of the right. Your choice. If you're in side plank, well, both options, really feel that right shoulder blade click onto the back, feel its strength there. And then from side plank, step the left foot forward. We'll all rise to our crescent in this twisted T here. So lifting up in the twist, immediately inhale, exhale. You can exalt it, reaching right arm up, left arm down the right leg. Hold on to that neutral pelvis. Don't let the low back get involved here. Inhale, exhale, open it up, warrior two. Left leg is forward, arms extend. Reverse it, exhale, and make it a little wave-like. Inhale through center, and exhale, warrior variation. Inhale through center, exhale, reverse. So nice and mobile here. One more time, reverse. Two options, you can stick with this wave or head to a half moon. If you wanna do that, you'll step the right foot in a bit, and then hinge at that left hip Lifting the right leg as you go for half moon. You can lower the left fingertips under the shoulder. You could hover them. But feel a sense of lift into this left hip joint, not sagging back into it. We'll all plant the hands at the front of the mat, regardless of where you are. Lower the right toes, lift that left leg up, three-legged down dog. It's our shifting moment, so take any of the options we did before, or draw the left elbow to the right. Nope, nope, that's not it. The <laughs> left knee to the right elbow. It's always this one that gets me. So reaching back for your three-legged down dog, reaching through that left foot, and then exhale, crossing it on the diagonal with the knee there. It might feel surprisingly like you've got a lot of mobility there and that is our spiral meridian at work next time you reach it back lower the foot we'll shift forward to plank lower to the floor take your time to get there inhale for cobra you could also make this a locust by flying arms and legs back turn the glutes on really anchor your pubic bone Plant those hands, tuck the toes, exhale, down dog. 
Walk the feet in a bit. Left leg lifts here. We'll step the left foot forward. Coming to your standing L, you can stay here or press into that left foot, fly the arms back for, for an airplane. Everybody press into the left foot, rise to stand, right knee lifts. This time option to make it more of a standing twist, grabbing that right knee with the left hand if you'd like, maybe flying the right arm back. Other option is to start to extend the leg a bit. Come back to center, exhale, sweep this right leg back for your airplane or walk the hands down for your standing L. Press into the left foot, right knee lifts, your version of standing twist, keeping this spine long, whichever you pick, neutral pelvis. Back to center, one more time, standing L or airplane, reaching right leg back, we practice this, so maybe this time it feels more accessible, albeit a little tired, and then lift that right knee up as you come to stand for your last twist here, your version. And exhale, we'll head to a seated twist. Right knee's gonna cross behind the left leg. Let's pause in that for a second. Oh yeah, we need a minute. Facing the side of the mat here, you can roll the shoulders or Roll the belly or kind of the rib cage area. Feeling that open the hips a little bit. Getting a minute of a break. Well, not a full minute, but a moment. And then let that rolling go. We'll unwind to the back of the mat. You can plant both hands or turn the left fingers to face the front of the mat for a one arm table here, lifting that pelvis. If you're in the one arm, really secure the left shoulder blade on the back. Exhale, we'll all start to lower the hips. Turn for your three-legged down dog or dolphin. Left leg lifts here. Bend the knee, and then you can circle the hip in one direction and then the other. And we'll step the left foot forward for a warrior one. Rising to vertical here, inhale. Option to exhale, hinge in the left hip. We'll bring the right hand to the mat for a bit of a twist if that feels okay. Alternative option is to stick with the humble warrior, interlacing those hands behind the pelvis. From here, heading to your dancers, right hand plants, come to the outer border of the right foot. Maybe that left foot steps behind. Reaching the left arm forward. New move here, left hand plants to the mat. We'll draw the left knee across to the right elbow, then extend that leg for fallen triangle. You're on the outer border of the left foot, inner border of the right. Reaching right arm up here. Exhale. Plant the right hand, we'll scoot the left foot back to the mat like a standing L. Rise to stand, right knee lifts. Figure four, last moment, external rotation in the right hip, crossing ankle over thigh, shifting the hips back. You can again reach the arms alongside the ear. Other option here is to add a twist through the ribs to the left. And you'll feel how that pulls a bit on the right hip. And then if you want even more, you can hinge in the hips more and start to draw the elbow towards the right ankle. If you feel like your pelvis is getting wonky to make that happen, just let it go. Rise out of that twist. If you took it, we'll plant the right foot, step it forward, inhale, arms reach up and we'll Head to the other side. Last time here, exhale, hinge at the hips, hands plant. Left foot steps back, lower that knee, untuck the toes. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, right arm reaches forward, down and around to take you into our twists, swinging these arms side to side. Reaching 
feeling the shoulder blades be more mobile on the back and anchoring that left half of the pelvis. Next time this left arm is forward, pause, head to your twisted crescent here. You can extend the back leg or take it to a side plank, stacking the right leg on top of the left. Hold with that left shoulder blade, almost like you were rotating the arm into the floor. And front side plank will step the right foot forward, meeting up with our twisted crescent people. Rise in your twist in this crescent. Inhale, exhale, you can make it exalted. Reach that left arm up, right arm reaches down the left thigh. Inhale, exhale, open it up, right warrior two. Opening to the opposite side of the mat, inhale in center, exhale reverse. Inhale through center, make it a wave here. Right forearm to right thigh, reverse. Warrior variation. Inhale, one more reverse here. You can keep with your wave or come to a half moon. Step the left foot about halfway in, hinge in the right hip for your half moon. Feeling lift into the right hip here. Maybe those right fingertips come under the shoulder. And really, you're still feeling like. You could stand on the left foot on the wall behind you. Everybody plant your hands at the front of the mat, left toes lower, right leg lifts, three-legged down dog, and we'll start our shifting forward, coming to plank, quadruped, one-legged plank, or crossing right elbow, nope, right knee to right to left elbow. As you go, did it again. One day I'll learn. Shifting it back and reaching forward, feeling your strength here. And next time you shift forward, we'll move to a plank lower to the floor. Exhale, inhale for your cobra or fly it for a locust, reaching arms and legs off the ground behind you. Exhale, stack the palms under your forehead, bend those knees, swivel it out here, moving side to side, windshield wipering the legs. Good, and then let that go. Tuck the toes once again, press into those hands, lifting to your down dog. Right foot steps forward for your standing L. Reaching the left leg back, maybe taking this immediately to an airplane. So we know what's coming. Exhale, we'll rise to stand, left knee lifts, taking it towards more of a standing twist this time, grabbing the knee or somewhere on the leg. And then return, standing L or airplane. Your choice. Press into the right foot, left knee lifts, standing twist. Holding on to that right glute and return, standing out or airplane. Last time here, rising for your twist, your choice with the arms and the leg position. And then re release the left leg, we'll cross it behind the right for a seated twist, facing the side of the mat, and then add your rolls, whatever you want here. Taking a moment for yourself to relax, sort of. If you're circling, you can head the other way. Good, let that go, we'll unwind to the back of the mat. Your version of table, you can have two hands down or flip your right hand, extend the hips up for a one arm table. Oh, feeling the opening across the chest, it feels nice. And then start to lower those hips. We'll turn to the right, three-legged down dog or dolphin, right leg lifts, bend the right knee, and then you can add your pulses here using the glute. Nope, I lied. We're gonna circle the hip 
adding some hip circles here in one direction and then the other. From here, step into a, a warrior one, press into those hands, swing the right foot forward, adjust that left leg as needed, inhale, lift. Exhale, start to hinge forward, maybe bringing left hand to the floor for your twist. Other option is to stick with your humble warrior, interlace the hands at the back of the pelvis like we've been doing. Everybody lower that left hand under the shoulder if it isn't for dancer's table. Outer border of the left foot, right foot steps behind, reaching here, and then transitioning, falling triangle, right hand plants, right knee to left elbow, and then extend the leg, opening up for falling triangle. Plant this left hand, slide the right leg back to the mat, planting like a standing L and then rise to vertical for figure four. Left knee lifts, external rotation. Sit those hips back. Maybe extending the arms here. Or adding a twist with prayer hands, twisting to the right. And then you can also try flexing at the hips, hinging at the hips there to bring that elbow towards the left angle. If it's not driving for you, no need to do it. We'll rise out of that if you took it and immediately come towards our back. So plant the left foot, get there in any way that works for you. And we'll just take a couple moments in Shavasana today. A little bit short on time. But we'll find a few moments to melt into the mat here. If you want to find a position that's different from lying on your back, please feel free. Something that's comfortable, enables you to relax. And really let yourself melt when you get there. Just feel that pulse of activity coming throughout your body. But letting kind of your spirit and your mind sink away from the physical world for a moment. If you'd like to stay longer today, mute your video or pause it and stay as long as you'd like. If you're ready to move, on your next inhale, you can peel the arms overhead or somewhere in a direction that allows you to stretch your limbs away from each other. If you're not on your back, really reaching away, feeling the extra length and strength in your body right now. And then exhale, completely relax the effort. And if it works for you, you can make your way to a seated position, maybe keeping the eyes closed. We'll just take a moment to close together and send us into the weekend or the rest of your afternoon or morning, whenever you're taking this. Pausing wherever you are, just take a note of this feeling of energy pulsing throughout the body. All of your work has generated this new form of you. And that's always at your fingertips. You can always access this. Let's close with one breath together. Inhale through the nose. Open the mouth and exhale. Thank you so much for your practice today. 
the light in me sees and honors the light in each of you. All right, I'll stick around if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'm back next week. I hope you guys have a beautiful weekend. Um, stay safe, take care of yourselves. Thanks, guys.